Open with me in your Bible, if you would, to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 7. I just want to minister to you for a moment on the subject of prosperity as we have been for many months now. In 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse number 10, the Bible says, Moreover, this is God speaking to David, I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more, nor shall the sons of wickedness oppress them any more as previously. So that's been our text for the past uh, couple of weeks. This is the third part where I've been led to talk to you about a place of your own. I want, you to, I want you to think about where you are right now. How would you like to spend the rest of your life in that place? Now, if the answer is not like, oh, I don't think I would want to do that because I always had the dream to be able to have a house on the golf course or to be able to do this or that, then I want you to receive this as a word from the Lord. God wants you to be able to have a place of your own. He says, for my people, I am going to plant them in a place of their own where they don't have to move anymore. Amen. So if you're, if you're not in that place that you would like to consider, as the world would call it, a forever home, then I want you to be rest assured God wants to bring you into a place of your own. And that's what we've been talking about. Then I was inspired in the book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse number 19 and 20, especially for today. The Bible says, he who tills his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows frivolity will have poverty enough. And then verse 20 says, a faithful man will abound with blessings, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. Uh, I primarily want to focus on verse number 19, but I was inspired by verse 20 because the Bible says that a faithful man or woman will abound with blessings. One thing we've learned through this year is that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Isn't that right? Amen. And we talked about last week that when you are faithful over little, he'll make you ruler over much. And then when you are faithful over that which belongs to someone else, then God will make you ruler over that which is your own. So especially if you don't own outright. And I, and I like to clarify that because if you're paying a mortgage, you don't own it outright. You miss enough payments to that mortgage company, that mortgage company will come and take your home and not pay you back what you paid into it. And, and, and they will own the home properly outright based on contract as it was agreed. So until you own it, you don't own it. So when you're faithful in that mortgage or faithful in that rental payment, when you're faithful over that which belongs to somebody else, the spiritual principle is that God will give you that which is your own. So in this passage in Proverbs chapter 29, he's talking about faithfulness. But I want you to notice especially verse number 19. He says, he who tills his land will have plenty of bread. Now, where I grew up, I grew up in Detroit. Uh, you know, we sometimes would refer to money as bread. <laughs> like, like dough. <laughs> Shrilla cheddar <laughs> so, you know. so now notice he says here he who tills his land will have plenty of bread and, and we could really substitute and say that the person who tills his land is going to have plenty of money but the opposite of that is that you're going to have poverty enough or the person who follows frivolity will have poverty enough so i'm led to challenge you today from this passage of scripture to sow your fields. That's the title, if you would, for this mini message. Is to challenge you to sow your field. The Bible talks about tilling his field. In other words, you till the ground, you break it up 
so that you can plant the seed. And by doing that, by sowing your field, given time, you're going to have plenty. Amen. So we've been talking about God wanting to plant you in a place of your own. And it's unequivocally, uh, unequivocally God's will for you to have that. But in order for that to happen, we've learned that you have to put first things first. Amen. Putting first things first. That comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 24. I love how it reads out of the uh, message translation. It says, first, plant your fields, then build your barn. Is this scripture a revelation to you? Because in the world's way, this is absolutely backwards. They would rather build their bank accounts before they go out and take care of some other things or, or, or start something. But God says, first, plant your fields. This is God's way. I want you to imagine a, a, a being a farmer just starting out. Which is most important? Sowing your fields or building your barns? Sowing your fields. I mean, if you just think in a practical sense, if I'm a farmer and I'm just getting started, I, I don't have any harvest, I don't have any fields already planted, I'm going to launch out and I'm going to get started. The first thing that I should do is actually get the seed in the ground because it takes time before the harvest can even come. As a matter of fact, if I take time, whatever amount of months, to plant my fields, get the fields ready, get the seed in the ground, then while the seed is in the ground, I can have all the time I need to build the barn so that when this seed comes up and the harvest comes, then I'll have a place to put the harvest in the barn. It would be backwards to start building the barn and then sowing the field. You might even miss a window uh, or not even be able to get it in the way that you need to. So in this verse, uh, obviously, he's talking about individuals who sow their field are going to have plenty versus poverty. The word plenty means you're going to have more than enough. You're going to have prosperity instead of lack. So I want you to listen to carefully to what God is saying. Why does the farmer till the land? It's so that he can sow the seed. Then turn with me, if you would, to the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, and verse number 24. If you've been wondering, uh, why are we doing this? Uh, if you've been wondering why we're doing this, Proverbs chapter 11, verse number 24 says, This is one who scatters, yet increases more. And there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. So the Bible teaches us that there's one kind of person who scatters, and yet they increase. But there's another kind of person that withholds. Another word for withholding is saving. There's one, and when the Bible talks about scattering, it's talking about scattering seed. The kingdom of heaven is as if a man scattering seed on the ground. Given time, it'll produce a harvest. There's a kind of person who sows and yet increases, but then there's another kind that, that, that withholds more than they should. Now, it's important to withhold. We're going to talk about that. Amen. The Lord's given me very good and very clear direction about withholding and building barns. But we're just looking at the divine order of the way things should be. When the Bible talks about this, it encourages me in what we're doing. And I'm excited about it. The revelation that I've received from the Lord is for us to first sow our fields and then build our bank accounts. And I believe with all my heart that because we are sowing our fields, we're going to have plenty. Amen. We are tilling our land and we're going to have more than enough. And I challenge you, if you're looking to build your barns, praise God. Make sure you got good seed in the ground so that you can have an abundance. Did you all get anything good out of that today?